collectively, it would be a real worship, Father. It would be a moment spent with you rather than just empty words flowing through our minds. Lord, silence the things of this world. Silence the things of even just today, Lord, um, so that we may spend some time in your glorious presence. Thank you for all that you do, Father. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen.
My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave.
I know we, uh, we can be a bit reserved sometimes, but let's uh, open our mouths and our, our lungs and, and let's worship. Just say, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this time together. We glorify your name. We praise you and we exalt you. We give you a mighty roar of who you are and what you've done. Thank you for all that you've done. I just want to read from uh, Colossians. It says, oh, let me first ask, you know, the reason why we make so much of Jesus the reason is this. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by Him, all things were created, in Him and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and in Him, all things are held together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead. And in everything, he might be preeminent. For in him, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, to reconcile himself to all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you and me, who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body, of flesh by his death in order to present us holy and blameless and above reproach before him. He has done it all for us. There's nothing we can do that can earn his salvation, his grace, his favor. He has done it already. And so that's why Christ is everything. Christ is the most important because everything was done in him for him, through him, by him. And, and we, don't have to, we don't have to do it by our works. It's by his works. Amen. Lift my fear by the side of the road. Hear you speak, I won't let go Fall to my knees as I lift my hands to pray God, every reason to be here again The Father's love that draws me in And all my eyes want to see is a glimpse of you Cause all I need is you
Easier sung than done, right? All we need is the Lord. 
Don't you want to close your eyes with me? Father, we, Lord, as best as we can, Father, we, we want to mean those words, Lord. And all we truly need is you, Lord. Father, that you hold the universe in your hand as we sang, Lord, is something that our minds cannot even fathom, Father. All 40 billion light years of it, Lord. We, we don't know how you do it, Lord. Your majesty far surpasses our human understanding, Lord. In this universe, everything that you have detailed from tiny bacteria, Father, to the sun, Lord, it is all within the palm of your hand. And Lord, we wake up in the morning and we, we need many things, Father, but truthfully, we need only you, Lord. Father, help us to seek first your face before everything else, Lord. Help us, Lord, to forget the things of this world in this moment and truly just say that all we need is you, Lord. Thank you so much, Father, for your son, Jesus, that we sang, Lord, that gave it all for us, Father, that we may gladly receive eternity with you, Father, a sinless eternity with you. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. You may take your seats. Um, to those who came in after the first song, and there's many of you, this place is packed, man. You guys know we got an 8 and 11 o'clock as well. You know that, right? Just, just putting it out there. Use it. Don't use it. Um, both services have their advantages, of course. Um, but great to have you. It's great to, if you're visiting us for the first time. It's good to have you. I hope that somebody has welcomed you with a smiling face or you've had the best coffee in Joburg. Um, and stick around after the service. I want to encourage you guys to stick around. Get to know a few people. Our next service is only at 11. So there's enough time to grab a cup of coffee, uh, chat to someone. Behind me is a QR code. You can direct your phone to it. It'll take you to our website. You get to know about who we are, what we do. We're a Bible-believing church that loves Jesus, loves His people, and we love community. Um, I said it in the first service, we, we have a saying here at Forest Community Church, come as you are, but don't stay as you are. We welcome anyone and everyone. But for some reason, the young married couples have decided that they're not going to stay as they are. They will procreate. And so you'll find lots and lots of kids in this church. We, we love kids. We, we uh, you know, this church has been going on for such a long time. I've been here for 17 years. And some of the guys that were behind me on the keyboards and some of the guys you'll greet, they were this big when I first met them. And so that's what we're about. We're about community. Um, and so if you're looking for a home, welcome home. Uh, some of the announcements for this morning, just quickly, we've got Gather. That's our shop downstairs. Uh, it's a coffee co-working space where you can just come and relax a little bit, have some coffee, same good coffee you have here. We serve downstairs. Um, just a lack of time where you guys can get together, hang out, uh, you know, relax. If you just want to have a meeting, also great. I said in the first service, there's always some baked goods going on downstairs. And so if you're on like a sugar thing or a sugar fast, maybe wait for next week. Um, the others that don't care, that, that say life is too short to care about your waistline, amen. Um, see you Monday from Tuesdays. We open from a Tuesday to Friday. Then uh, we've got Looking In happening on the 10th of February. Now, looking in is exactly what you, what you think it is, is it is looking into this church. What do we believe in? What do we stand for? What are some of the close-handed issues, stuff that we really, um, we, we strongly believe, and then some open-handed issues, things we can discuss and debate, and we're not going to lose each other or our salvation if we debate these things. Um, it's a great opportunity also for you to get involved in the church. Somebody asked me earlier, how do I get involved in the church? Come and check out looking in. See if we, God has knitted us together so we may walk this long road together. And so 10th of Feb, 9 a.m., it's a Saturday. Please do register so we know of the numbers. Uh, we've got some idea. But should you forget and you wake up on the 10th, don't stress. Please still come through. Okay. Is that good? Then we're going to give you now the opportunity to give of your tithes and your offerings. So those who've come prepared to give, um, we shall gladly receive. Thank you. Have you ever 
San Bonani. Goeiemorgen. Lugenda. Ciao, Ber. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, we are starting a new series this morning uh, called The Book of Better Things through the Book of Hebrews. And I thought the best way to start that would be Subisu to share with us. Read the scriptures, please. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through to 5. God's final word. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. The son superior to angels. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have become your father, or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through to 3. Warning to pay attention. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Thanks. Thank you, Sibu Susibe. I don't know what I called you before that. I tried to, I can only, I know, not, uh, sorry, I know name Sibu Susibe, and then I try and do the short, and I practiced, and I practiced, and like a clever Mlungo got it wrong. Anyway, thank you so much for that. We uh, welcome. My name is Tony. I'm one of the leaders here, and I get to share with you this morning. So we're working through a new series, a book called The Letter to the Hebrews. We've called it The Book of Better Things. Now, I'm endeavoring to uh, teach as best as I can. I'm not really a, a Bible teacher, 
I prefer to, to preach, uh, to inspire as best as I can. I mean, uh, you say these things, but can you do them? Well, let you, you determine. I think there's one or two people here that came back from last year, so I'm, there must be something I can do right. <laughs> but I'm not a great teacher. I'm not good at, I mean, I love researching teachers, listening to teachers, guys and, and girls and, and that are able to unpack the scriptures. I like to keep it kind of more uh, inspirational as best as I can and, uh, and preaching. So I, can you just give me a bit of mercy today? Is that cool? You could just say, look, he's not a bad teacher. He's a better preacher. Uh, stick to preaching or, or maybe God help, help him be a better teacher. <laughs> anyway, we will go through the book this morning. We, um, we call it the book of better things because it talks about, it's a lot about Jesus. And I, I love that. You know, it's, this church is all about Jesus. I uh, get very concerned when I drive past a church and I see a picture of the pastor and his bocky or his squeezer, or, I mean his wife. <laughs> and I, I get, that worries me. It's like, is the church about the pastor or is the church about Jesus? And sometimes you can listen to sermons and there's no Jesus in the sermon. And you walk away at times and you and you say, wow, that guy or that girl or that person was amazing. We should never walk away from church to saying things like that about the preacher. It's like, you are amazing. You shouldn't be amazing. We should honor the gift and appreciate the gift that God has given, but we should go away and say, Jesus is amazing. And hopefully in this church, you go away a lot more saying, Jesus and not Charles. Now, not Charles is amazing, but he's not that amazing. I know him. I've known him for 22 years. He's actually less amazing than you actually think he is. But, but anyway, <laughs> so it's the book of better things, okay? So this is God's final revelation. It's a book written to people whose faith was lagging, okay? So maybe you find yourself here this morning. They were, they were struggling with the same problems that we have. Uh, they, 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 uh, you find out that it's harder and harder to work and to walk with God. It's, this is not an easy walk. Being a Christian is not easy. I know because I used to be a first-class Great sinner. I was a fantastic sinner. Whatever sin that was imaginable, I tried it. It felt like it. And that was easy. But now to walk with Jesus and walk with God and to deny the lust of the flesh, deny what the eyes want, deny pride and all these things, the things of the world, was, is a lot more difficult. To be kind, I was, it was easy for me to be nasty. If I didn't like you, you would know about it. I would tell you, you're a clown. Just stay away from me. That's how I used to be. But God changed my nature. He changed my heart. And now I need to be kind to you. <laughs> I need to be loving and patient. I'm not a patient person. Some of you irritate me. But I've changed and changing. And it's not easy to be like this. It's not easy to be humble. I'm a proud guy and proud of it. But pray <laughs> that God would give me grace and humility. I'm a proud man pursuing humility by the grace of God. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that it's not easy to be a Christian. Maybe for you, but not for me. And uh, the message from this, bar, this book is to not give up. That I love. I, I, we don't give up. Life is tough, friends. Now, we always talk about life being beautiful and life being brutal. There's some beautiful parts of life. There's some brutal parts of life. But, but I'll be, next month, can you believe it, I'm, I've been on this planet for 60 years. I know it looks like it, but that's a long time, 60 jolly years. And what I can tell you, life is beautiful with lots of beautiful things, but life is also tough. It's been tough every year. And this writer, which we don't know his name, he says, don't give up. They say, the stats say that one out of 10 men, <clears throat> I'm going to finish strong. One out of 10 men are going to finish strong with their God, with their wife, and with their children. And whenever I'm amongst 10 men, I tell them I'm the one guy that's going to finish. <laughs> so I don't know about the rest of you nine guys. You, you, look, you look strong and you look clever. You look sassy. You, you think you're clever. But you might, you, might, uh, you might think I'm arrogant. I'm not arrogant. I am actually, by the way. But I'm more determined to stay with my God, to stay with my wife, and stay with my kids. And so if there's 100 guys here, there's 20 of us that are going to finish strong. 10 of us that are going to finish strong. See, my math weren't too good. 10 of us that are going to finish strong. 
I'm one of them. There's only nine places left, so I don't know which, which one of you guys are coming with me, but there's only nine of you. The theme from this book is Christ is better. He's better than anything you could ever imagine, anything you could pursue in your life. I know as well because I pursued as much as I could. And when I met Jesus, he fulfilled those, that deep longing, that deep desire, that deep need in my heart. And he's, he's done that for 37 years. See, this letter is birthed out of concern. This writer is concerned for these people. And he's saying to them, go all the way. Because it's not how you start that's, that's necessarily or as important as how you finish. I mean, the start is important. I mean, if you start too fast, you won't finish. And if you start too slow, and the comrades, like some of you that finished after 11 hours. You know, the, the comrades, when I ran the comrades, it was 11 hours. Now they extended it for some of you from 11 to 12. That's not a real medal, just by the way. <laughs> but some of you, if you start too slow, the key is how you finish. We want to hit that tape at the end of the race, and we want God to say, well done, good and faithful servant. But this this, this book talks about trials and challenges and difficulties that we'll encounter. And it talks a lot about faith. Trust God. Some of them were facing severe persecution. Some of their, their loved ones were suffering and some of their friends were walking away from the faith. Ever been there? I've been around the church for a long time, 37 years. I've seen people come and people go. I don't get overexcited. Somebody comes in the church, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't get too excited. I say, listen, I want to see you in 10 years' time. It's all well and good to be here for 10 weeks or 10 months. 10 weeks, what about 10 years? This is a long journey. This is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And so he's saying to them, lift up your eyes. Anchor yourselves in Jesus. Don't give up. Keep the faith. And this is a message to you as well, because somewhere along your journey following Christ, you, you probably thought, hey, man, this, I thought this was going to be easy. That preacher on TV or that prosperity preacher at that conference at that crusade, he said, if I come to Jesus, all my problems are going to go away. My wife is still irritating me. My husband's still irritating me. There's still temptations in my life. It's not easy. I thought I was going to, you know, when I first got saved, I bought myself a guitar. I thought I was going to be the next hit, like, <laughs> worship leader. But then I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to get the, 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 I don't even know what it's a chord, and then strum. And I had to ask people, how do you strum? Do you strum down twice and up once? And how, how do you get that rhythm? That's how bad I was. I thought I was going to wake up singing gospel music to Marvin Gaye. <laughs> but it wasn't like that. I thought everything was going to be groovy. Peace and love. But it wasn't happening. There were some challenges. This is a very different message to possibly what you've heard before, where you come to Jesus and you will have no problems. I want to tell you that that's not true. You will still have challenges. You'll still have problems. But don't f lag in your faith. You have to keep fit. I was just chatting to a man who's run over three days, 200, a 200-kilometer 200 race. And he's fit. He, he says, I'm disciplined what I eat. Now, many of us are disciplined as to how we train, we exercise, we run, we go to the gym, we watch what we eat. But what about spiritually? Are we, are we exercising ourselves spiritually? Are we, are we alert? Are we sharp? Are we ready? Are we fit spiritually? Are we reading the Bible and getting into it? Are we spending time with God? Not because we have to, but because we want to be fit and sharp and aware of what's happening. And he says this right here. He says, don't give up. This is the message through the whole book. Don't give up. I know many of you are going through hardships, some really tough situations, but the Bible says don't give up. While you're alive, there's still hope. God can save you and rescue you and bring you through. Don't give up. Christ is better. Go all the way. Put your faith in Him. Now, this is a difficult book, one of the most difficult books in the Bible. And so I had to get a lot of help. And uh, whilst there's so much plagiarism consuming the world, I thought maybe best I'd just let you know I've listened to Pastor Greer, uh, John Piper, Michael Eaton, uh, uh, what was that, Vody Buckham, uh, all these guys. So, so my whole sermon's in quotation marks, beginning to end. So it's, it's plagiarized. The whole thing's plagiarized. Everything I'm going to share is from other people, and I've mentioned their names, so you can go to follow their sermon. You say, well, you might, might as well get hold of them and say, listen, Tony preached your sermon. 
And hopefully you can say he's preached it better than you, <laughs> or not as good as you. But anyway, I just want to give credit to those, because I've needed a lot of help. No one knows who the author of this book is. Many people have speculated as to who it is. Is it, is it, is it Paul? Is it Barnabas? Is it Luke? We don't know, okay? Some people have written a book about who the author could be. It's like, I don't want to waste my time reading a book like that. We don't know. We know God is the author. He writes everything. He inspires man to write. So we don't know. But let's go on a little journey as to what this message, this book has for us. Firstly, it says in, in chapter 1, verse 1, long ago, I'm reading from the uh, ESV version. Excuse me. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. That's how God spoke to us. We all come from the same root. We all come from Adam and Eve. We're all, we all the same. We all have the same father. That's what's so beautiful. There's nothing like Christianity. It brings all color, all tribe, all nationality, all age, everything together. No, there's no other organization on planet earth that can bring us together like Christ and the church. Nothing. It's beautiful. And he spoke to us, to our people, through the prophets. How else did he speak? If you read your Old Testament, you see he spoke through visions and dreams. That's what God in the, in the New Testament it says that, that old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions. I'm still in the vision stage of visualization. He delivered message through, message through angels. He spoke through angels. He, he spoke in an audible voice. He wrote on walls. He appeared in a burning bush. That's how God used to speak to us. But it says here in verse 2, but in these last days, we're in the last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. By His Son. His Son's name is Jesus Christ. This is God who came in the form of a man, came as a man, lived amongst us, died in our place, gave up His body, shed His blood to pay the penalty for us so we can have access to God. It's the most beautiful story, the gospel that you'll ever read or hear. Previously, he gave us prophets to tell us the Word of God. In the last days, he gave us Jesus, who is the Word. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is God. Now, I, I don't like, you know this, this program called The Chosen? I haven't watched it, but I, I struggle to watch these programs on, on Jesus. Because I get myself lost in the, the look of the person. Did Jesus really look like that? And most of, most of the time, he's like, he's white, white, white. Now, I don't know if Jesus was white. Now, many of you have got a picture of Jesus on your wall at home, and he's, 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 he's very pale in his complexion. I'm not saying that's bad, but it's just he's white. He's got very, he must have he had some nice product for his hair because his hair's <laughs> falling down. He, he must have had some bit of Brotox because he's got shiny skin. I'm, I'm not mocking Jesus. I'm mocking that picture because, I mean, that, I don't want to follow that Jesus. Now, I don't think Jesus was white. Now, some people in America say, Jesus was black. Jesus wasn't black or white. He was brown. God's clever, isn't he? God's clever. In between. I believe he was from the Middle East. He was brown. I don't know what he looked like. I don't think he looked like anything like those pictures that you have in your home. Take that picture down and burn it. So remember this, that Jesus is God. Remember this next time you're talking to a Muslim. Whoa, here we go. You can't say that, Tony. Watch, I will say it. Or a Mormon. Do you know the Mormon guys that move around with a little badge that said, I'm a Mormon? I must be careful there. Next time you hear them, because they'll say, both of them, the Muslim and the Mormon, will tell you that Jesus was great. But after Jesus came, someone was greater, Muhammad. Jesus was a prophet, and then Muhammad came, and he put it all together. Not according to my Bible. Jesus spoke to us in the last days. He's, he's the final act. He is it. Or the Mormon will tell you that many years ago, a man by the name of Joseph Smith, he found himself in a forest, and he found a, a, a tablet with some writing on it, and he found a big pair of glasses, and he read this, and that's how we get the Book of Mormon. 
I think he was smoking some really good nsangu. <laughs> or tripping on some mushroom that he picked up just before that. Jesus, I'm not mocking anything, but you don't tell me that Jesus is not God. Don't tell me Muhammad is superior or Joseph Smith is superior to Jesus. Jesus, according to the scriptures, in the last days, Jesus spoke through by him. Not only that, he's appointed the heir, as verse 2 says, he's appointed the heir of all things. He's superior to prophets. He's superior to human beings. He's superior to angels. He's superior to everything. He is the heir. Now, I remember working for a company, and uh, the owner's son used to work alongside of me, and he used to strut around that factory a little different to me, because I was an employee. He was the owner's son, so he was the heir. And I used to get a little bit irritated. It's like, buddy, you, you walk in a bit, you, you're a bit confident walking around you. The one time I chatted, he says, listen, who's this company coming to you? Not coming to you, it's coming to me. He's the heir. Jesus is the heir. Uh, he's not arrogant like that guy, or, but he is the heir. Everything was created for him, as Ronnie said, and by him and through him and in him for Jesus. All the prophets were pointing to something. They weren't prof- pointing to Muhammad or Joseph Smith. They were pointing to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Everyone was speaking about him. And then through whom? It says here, through whom he also, through whom also he created the world. Through Jesus he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God the exact imprint imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the power or the word of his power. Jesus holds it all together. Now, now I'm not a, I wasn't a very clever guy at school. So, I mean, I did school, I just passed by, I just did the the least amount of work that I could just to get the certificate so I could get out of school and go and party. But, after school, I started to apply my brain, and I started to as, as I do now, when it says that he created all things, I think of our solar system, and you know what? It still baffles me. Our solar system, they reckon the diameter is 7.5 billion kilometers or miles. How do they measure that? 7 billion miles. They reckon if you travel in a vehicle 100 kilometers an hour, it'll take you 13,000 years to get across. That's just our solar system. The experts say that there are 100 billion solar systems in the Milky Way galaxy alone, which forms part of ours, of, of us. 100 billion solar systems like ours in the Milky Way galaxy. And there are over 50 billion galaxies. Now, I wasn't clever at school, but I'm clever now. How do they know that? Do, how, did they go... F- the sun is 90 million miles away. Did they go there to check it out? If they got a telescope, they can see 50 billion galaxies. They conned you. They told you. They say, follow the science. Do they even know the science? They're guessing, man. But what do I know? What I do know is when I look up at the sky at night, it's like, it's amazing. They must know something, but I don't agree with everything that they say. How do you know there's 50 billion galaxies? Maybe not, is there not 51? (laughs) Maybe there's only 50 that you could see with your telescope, but there's more? You don't know exactly everything. Jesus created all that. That's the point I'm trying to make. It's it's just mind-blowing. The Bible says he's the radiance of the glory of God. When last did you look up at the sun? The sun is, is, is a massive, this massive ball of Fire or gas? Is it gas? No, it's not gas, is it? Please help me. I didn't do is it, is it, Anyway, is it, is it gas? Okay, you see, I did geography, I remember. But it's hot. They say it takes, to, to boil water, 100 degrees Celsius. They say the surface of the sun is 5,500 degrees Celsius. It's shisagakulu, which means it's very hot. He created all that. This morning, I jumped onto X, and I saw Elon Musk, he posted there, he says, Earth already receives about the same energy from the sun in an hour than humanity consumes in a year. He must, have been, he must know that I'm preaching this morning. He thought he'd help me, but I don't need you, Elon Musk. The Bible says that Jesus is the exact imprint of his nature. If you want to know what G- God is like, 
Jesus is the picture. The whole point here is Jesus is better, friends. You'll see through this book that we go through, Jesus is better. That theme will come through. Jesus is better. He is the Word. He is God. He's superior to angels. He's superior to prophets. It says this about Him. After making purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty of God, of the majesty on high. Jesus made purification for our sins. Now, all those sins. Now, there's a, there's a lot of people here this morning. Can you imagine if we collectively gathered all your dirty, stinking sins? Now, think of all the sins you've done. Ah, you're disgusting. It is disgusting if you think of it. You take all those sins. Jesus took them upon himself. Aren't you happy with that? I, you know, when I came to the church, I had, you know what a pentechnic is? It's a big lorry. I had about a hundred billion lorries of sin that I brought along with me. And when they said, Jesus is going to take it all, I said, when? Can he take them now? He took them all upon himself. All those things that you now have done, we're free. He paid the penalty. He hung on a cross. He shed his blood that paid the price. And we can come boldly. We don't have to come cowering, Lord, you remember I did this and I did that. And no, no, he says, behold, you're a child of God. I find that message amazing. I've looked for that message. I've looked for redemption everywhere growing up. I've looked for redemption in people and drugs and stealing, anything I could find. I was looking for redemption and purpose. I never found it until I met a person. His name is Jesus. Changed my whole life around. Never been the same again. He paid for us, sin, friends. Isn't that wonderful? You don't have to do it yourself. You couldn't do it yourself. He did it for you, and he did it for us, for, 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 for you and I. And the Bible says when he did it, he sat down. He sat down. It's finished. No, no more work to do. You don't have to pay for your own sin. You don't have to do penance. You don't have to pray more. You don't have to read your Bible more. You don't have to go to church more. You don't have to give more. You don't have to do any of those things. You, all you have to do is accept this wonderful gift of salvation. Jesus offered himself once and for all as the perfect sacrifice, and then he sat down. He is perfect. It's all about him. If you never hear Jesus from this pulpit, friends, run away. If this pulpit is more about people than it is about Jesus, if we have a high view of people and a low view of God, run away. Go find a better church. But I pray God will keep us straight. Tim Keller says, every story in the Bible is about Jesus. Did you know that? What about David? David? Jacob? Jonah? Well, let's read you what Tim Keller says. He says, Jesus is the truer and better Adam who passed the test in the garden and whose obedience is now imputed to us. Jesus was the truer and better Isaac who was not just offered up by his father on the mount, but was actually sacrificed for us. Jesus was the truer and better Jacob who wrestled and took the blow of justice we deserved so that we, like Jacob, only receive the wounds of grace to wake us up and discipline us. Jesus is the truer and better Joseph who sits at the right hand of the king and forgives those who betrayed him and uses his new power to save them. Jesus is the true and better David whose victory became ours even though we never lifted a stone to help him. Jesus is the true and better Samson, crushed under the weight of the wicked world to conquer our enemies and save us. I made a mistake because I gave these guys, this is coming up on the screen. Uh, uh, the at the last meeting, he said, Jesus is the true and better Johan. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Johan. Sorry, Johan. I love you, Johan. There's no Johan in the scriptures. It's Jonah. Jesus is the true and better Jonah, who was cast out into the storm so that we could be brought in. Friends, you know when you read your Bible, it's not really about you. It's about Him. It's about Jesus. Make your life about Him. Get your eyes off of yourselves, because you know what we do? We think the whole universe, the whole, He holds the universe to revolve around my little life. Am I not so important? Look at me. Do you know who I am? 
Who cares who you are? Who cares who I am? Our life is important, but our life is in Him. Make your life more about Him than it is about you. Get your eyes off of yourself. What a waste of sight to keep your eyes on yourself all the time. I mean, I know this. I'm an expert at it. Lift your eyes above the troubles, above your insecurities, above the issues, above your pride, above your wants, your desires, and fix your eyes on Him, and He'll give you what you need. So he closes. Let me close this portion or this sermon with this last, with his closing. He says this in Hebrews chapter 2. He says, therefore, okay, what I've just been speaking about, because of this, therefore, we must pay close attention. Now, the Australians, I've told you this before, the Aussies, they, they tell you when I'm there preaching, they say, don't, tell we, so don't say we must. They don't like to, and I like to come there as an African and say the Bible says you must, and I say you must too, just to rock them. The Bible says you must, and I'm telling you this, what the Bible says, you must pay close attention. If you're going to be one of the ten that finish strong, pay, co pay close attention to what you have heard, lest you drift away. The potential for you now to drift away is huge. Been in the church for a long time, I've seen people come and go. One Sunday, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Next Sunday, where are you? Praise the devil. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? The Bible is full of warnings, friends. This book is full of warnings. You can drift away and you can neglect this wonderful gift. There's lots of warnings. There's consequences. Jesus loves you and I, but there's consequences to the way we live. I played golf the other day. Last week with Nkosinati and Chomotso. And the day before, Chomotso and I we were at the driving range. We were practicing, and we got, we got to the course there. We walked onto the first tee, and we said, Nkosinati, hey, you're going to take your money today. We've been to the driving range, to which Nkosinati says, there's no consequences on the driving range. You just sit there and hit the ball. You don't even, you can close your eyes. There's no consequences. When you get to the course, you have to hit it straight on the fairway. There's a hole at the end. You have to get in the hole. So just a picture. You won't forget. There's consequences to how we live. Number one, warning. Don't, don't neglect this final word. Don't neglect what Jesus is telling us. If you won't listen to this message, friends, you could be sitting here and you just hear it, but you don't listen. I, I worry about you. Apply this message. Embrace it. Not because I'm telling you to, but because this is life. Receive Christ as your Lord. Humble yourself. Bend your knee. Receive Him. Don't neglect this word. And then secondly, don't drift away. You have the potential, the, the, the Hebrew writer is warning us, we have the potential to drift away. Ella, why don't you come, please? We, it's easy to drift away. As I told you, I've, I'm an old dude now. They call me Mkulu. Am I right, sorry? Mkulu men. They call me Mfundis. I'm not just Mfundis, I'm Mfundis Mkulu. So let me, while we're going to sing, I want you to reflect and we're going to sing a little. Why don't you just seated as we close this meeting? But 33 years ago, I got married to this lady, this beautiful lady. And I made a decision there where I asked myself, is there any other woman or any other thing that I would leave her for? And I made a decision there said nothing. There's no woman I'll ever leave her for, and there's no opportunity and no thing I'll ever leave her for. But what I had to do, I had to live like that. I had to live in such a way as that she would be number one. So there was no entertaining any flirting. There was no entertaining coffees and dinners with somebody else that wasn't my wife. I tried as best as I can to protect my eyes as to what my eyes look at, what my eyes linger upon, what my eyes view. 
where I go, who my friends are. All these things were principles, and I needed help. I've got brothers and sisters that help me. I meet up there regularly. They ask, how's it going? Are you having any trouble here, trouble there? I have accountable relationships to keep me. But there was nothing that could take away my love for her. I had boundaries and principles, and I started to live like that. Is Jesus enough for you? We sing this song. It's easy to sing this. All I need is you, Lord. All I need is you. But do we live like that? Because if we don't live, if, if he's not all we need, then we're lying. Rather don't sing if you're coming on a Sunday. All I need is you, Lord. But you've got a whole lot of other stuff. And if those were taken, he's not enough. Then you're a hypocrite. Rather come here on a Sunday. Maybe, maybe we should none of us sing. We just hum. Because we want to be truthful. But we want to be like that. Don't we, don't we want to live like that where he is everything? All I need is you want to sing that with conviction. We might not have it all together. But we can. We, why, why don't we, we do that now? We just... We're going we're gonna to close our eyes as we sit here, and we're going to examine our own hearts. Is He all you need? If everything was taken away from you, everything, is He enough? Your family, your spouse, your stuff, your kids, your grandkids, I've got eight of them. I don't say this lightly. Is He enough, though? I, I'm asking myself that question. Is He all I need? Let's Examine our hearts as we sing that together, as Ella leads us. Please do that. Father, I want to pray. Father, our, our Father. I'm praying to our Father. Your Father, my Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Father, I pray for these precious brothers and sisters I have. That you would keep them, bless them. Make your face shine upon them. Give them peace and be gracious to them. Protect them from all evil. If there's anyone sitting here that doesn't know you, Father, I pray they make a decision today to follow you, to receive you, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and their Savior. If there's some of us that are lagging, maybe entertaining stuff we shouldn't, bring that to our attention. Bring people alongside of us that can help us walk and catch up the pace so we don't lag any longer. For if there's some of us that are living life full, may they continue, may they run hard. We just pray as we leave this place that you go with us and that you keep us. If you are here this morning and you don't know Jesus, come to the front afterwards. It would be my privilege to pray with you. But God bless you. Have a wonderful week with Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.